Welcome back, survivors. I'm the survival of this, and we return to Curse of the Dead God. Now, I have been playing a lot of the game in my own time, so you're going to see that I have made quite a bit of progression from the last episode that went up, which was... Uh, actually will be tomorrow afternoon. But anyway, let me kind of show off our progression so far. So as you can see, we've sort of gone up and beaten the... I think there's the second level that lets you unlock all three of the active slots. But we also beat Tamok's Awakening, which was the next expedition after the Twins of sorts. So, what I'm going to do is try to only use the two modifiers up here, and only ones that you have access to at the second level. So I know one of them is the Favor of Sachal. At least I think that's what it is, or is it Sikal? I'm not entirely sure. But that's one which is very good just to have a bit of gold as a start. I I can't remember if you get the Will's Call. I think that's unlocks after you beat the second level. But I know this is one that you get on the first one you beat. So we're just going to use those two. And we're going to go in and I'm going to do the next expedition that I wasn't able to complete before. Which was Eclipse of the Cursed Twins. It's only medium exploration, so its length isn't bad. And maybe what I'll do... I think I might actually start with gold here, just so we can get double gold and then see what the weapons are. Because now that I've gotten a lot more time with the game, I've become a little more fluid with the combat, understand it a lot more. I admit, I don't parry as much as I should, but I've kind of... Well, no, master is a very, very incorrect term for it. I've gotten a little more adept with the game, so I can give a few tips or tricks. One of the big things is trying to get healing if you can. There we go. One of the things the game is kind of bad with right now is that healing is completely RNG upon if you get a relic or a weapon that offers it. And unfortunately, I think that's where the game has a few issues. It could use just a small minor source of healing. Nope, dodge that. In it just so that way. I'm gonna hear you. There we go. Just a s reliable source of small healing. Nope, didn't get to keep the greed kill modifier. Was a little too slow getting over these guys. And what's that? Ah, Sakal's pendant should be a little bit of good for that stats. But yeah, so that healing could use something that's a little more reliable and that you see more consistently. Ah, that's kind of a bad relic, but we don't have anything in our slots right now, so might as well take. And another one. Like, this is my problem, is you'll get relics like this, which are plus 20% to all healing effects, which is good, but it's sort of like having a, commu a computer monitor without the computer. It's a very good accessory coupled with it, but unless you have the main source, you're kind of screwed over because it does nothing for you. So I feel like that's why the game is a little hindered without a more a little bit reliable source of healing to find in there. Whether it's like some of these urns have a little, say, plus 25 health or something, that's just a small way to get more healing without needing to... Ooh. Ooh. There we go, and we do want to be careful because those jaguars are fireball traps. Yeah, it didn't open up a path down there. Oh, we got a couple more over here. Ooh, a claw. That's actually one of my favorite weapon types because in Curse of the Dead Gods, speed is... Ooh, speed is key because the heavy weapons aren't very good. You'll basically get locked into an animation and take a hit if you don't kill everything with your attacks before their combo ends. But with, like, claw weapons or swords as one-handed, you can just shred enemies. Like, as can see... Ah, shoot. Of course, I was saying that speed is key, but... Charge attacks, they can work in certain situations, but you do have to be much more careful than I was there. Oh, a uh, new shield. Another thing, too. Pistol, replace it as soon as you can. The pistol doesn't do enough damage, and the charge takes far too long to really warrant it to be very effective. My advice, if... I doubt a developer would actually watch my series, but if they do... 
My advice would be to change the pistol to do twice the amount of damage for how long it takes to actually get the perfect shot charge of it. There we go. Nope. Yeah, we'll be careful of that. There we go. And we'll let the environment kill some of these guys off. Ooh. Yeah, there we go. Even if the combo doesn't... Oh, Renegade. Ooh, dodge that. Yeah, that's why I love a claw, especially with that modifier, is it's very helpful. Okay. We'll probably take the Titan Slayer here, just because... Ooh, but well then that is not bad. Well, we're using a sword, so unfortunately we don't get the damage buff. I think we'll go for Titan Slayer here because of the crit damage it'll do to a boss. One of the best modifiers to have, basically sort of sort your loadout out in what you're using each weapon for. Like, your one-handed should probably be used for uh, stats or weapon. Maybe we'll go for stats run, because that's usually a pretty reliable way of just getting your bases up. Your one-handed weapons, I would say, use more for room clearing. So, focus more on getting stuff that, say, greed kills will heal you, or doing damage to anything with less health. Oh, come on, I unleash... That should not have counted. Ah, oh, shoot. Okay, well there's the environment helping us a little bit there. Oh, new claw, what's this one? Now, the poison attack's kinda nice, but I prefer to have the crit modifier, because if we do get lucky and find a relic that gives healing for crit damage, that is just a great kind of synergy between them. I was going to say combo, but I don't think that's the exact wording I want. Well, and we do have a bow. Now, the bow is not bad for effects, but again, it's, I found that a lot of the ranged weapons are too weak to really be effective. Ah, we'll go for Tamak and Sakal's favor. Wait, I'm actually... Oh, okay, that's right. Our corruption, I think, just went up this one. That's why we don't have anything listed right now. But we'll use gold to just buy that. And I think we'll go for maybe another stat, unknown, and then the stat again. Or should I try for the relic? Ah, see, this is where you gotta try to plan your route, because... I think we'll actually go gold, gold, and relic. Just because I do want to try to get us some healing in some way or form. And what's our corruption modifier going to be for our first one? Oh, I hate this one. Auric Malediction is probably the worst one to get because... You'll lose gold as you take damage, and though your health loss is reduced, you still will lose quite a bit of gold. Like, I think each attack can be up around... How much is a good kind of estimate. Maybe around 50 damage each, so... Well, let's just like that. Use the environment to get rid of that. There we go. We'll use the sword to take those guys, because the heavy two-handed weapons do have an ability to actually stun what they hit. So if somebody... Ooh, what's that? Oh no, maces are a very bad one-handed weapon, in my opinion. Son of a... you... Oh, and again. Sometimes the auto lock-on is a little annoying to deal with, too. There we go. Because when you're playing controller, the game will automatically lock on to your nearest enemy to give you that target to pull your tax aim for. Actually, we'll take that because I know... Ooh... Well, that's 48 base on its own. But we don't have any dexterity, so you know what? We'll keep the Titan Slayer we had, which I think is the one that we've actually got right now. There we go. 
Yeah, going back and forth, you can make quick work out of a lot of enemies. Uh-oh. Well, we want to take you out first. Ooh, dodge that. Unfortunately, the fire doesn't seem to do as much damage as would be nice. Let him do his two swings. There we go. The fire does illuminate around them, but doesn't do ticking damage, which is a little odd for choice for that. Anyway, next area. And what we got here? Do, do, do. This is just another gold. Oh, this is going to be one of the more trap-heavy areas. Shoot, I actually meant to go the other way, because the other way gives, gives you a little extra gold instead of being right to the end of the level here. At least I thought it would. Maybe I'm wrong. There's a free chest. What's this relic? Eh, gold offering, remove five corruption. Our corruption level's not bad. Is Once you get really good with the mechanics, you probably won't get corruption as quickly because you'll be able to save your blood offerings for other things. Like, I'll explain that a little more right now. What I mean by that is... There we go. Certain items you... Well, actually, all shrines that give you an item, you have a choice of either spending gold or taking a corruption increase in order to get the item. When you start off very early into the... Ah, oh, no, that's terrible. Again, pistols are just bad in general, but when you start off early into the run... Oh, excuse me. You might be tempted to get a lot of corruption for a very good starter item. It's not a bad choice, but down the line, it'll start adding up on you. So it's a good idea just to kind of pace yourself and figure out if you can go longer without getting yourself too corrupted. And we'll just dodge our way by these and then come on back. I think this is the one where if you go this route, you get a little bit extra. Yeah, this definitely is. Okay. Oh, was a little slow. Be ah, shoot. That's the problem with the two-handed weapons, is they are... Oh, what's that? Uh, I don't really have anything that weakens enemies. You can parry enemies in order to weaken them, but I don't think it applies to all enemies. I think only some will. And we'll use the trap to bust our way through there. Perfect. Yeah, this is the little extra route that this room will give. So we can snag those bits of gold. And carry on back this way. Definitely do recommend... Ooh, actually, and make use of the environment when you do get the traps that... There we go. That was a nice little combo we got to finish them off. Make use of the environment like these traps, although do be careful if you're using a fire weapon or have an enemy on fire near them. They are almost contagious in what they do. Uh, see, the problem is that's not bad, but you don't have any healing effect. So I'm going to use one of our favors. Eh, I mean, it would help a bit, but I'd prefer... I'll try one more. God, this is just awful. I guess we'll do the 75% when a health curse is lifted. This unfortunately only happens when you defeat one of the bosses or... Well, I guess they're called... Yeah, they're champions. So this one, the Blood Hunter, is the easiest boss out of all of them. When you start off, he'll have one of his Jaguars or Panthers behind him. Actually, pretty sure it is just Panthers. That's kind of thematic for... Some... Oh, shoot. Two. Yeah. See, this is why anything that either gives you that 30% bonus or deal critical to a boss is such a good weapon to... Ah, oh, God, but again... So, he's a pretty set pattern. It's basically summons the panther, throw one to two spears at you. I don't know if it's depending on... Dep 
depends on his health level before he starts changing pattern up a little bit, but it's basically Panther, Spear Chuck, Spear Chuck, and we'll move back because he'll should summon, yeah, there's the Panther coming out, or Jaguar, I gotta remember it's Jaguar, that's actually one of the, and we always save a point of stamina because you want to be able to dodge those, and then just wail into them. There we go. Once you learn his patterning and get more adept with the controls and movement, the Blood Hunter is easy. You can probably take him down without anything special, really, for equipment wise. No, we want to keep a boss killer. But I think we will take this. The None of the effects are super strong, like the base damage, if a weapon is a pistol, we could try for. Perfect dodge isn't bad to try to get, so we'll probably do that. And now we'll continue on. We've got full health, so we don't need the Haven. So maybe what we'll do... I'm thinking double gold stats, and then maybe try some unknowns and see, but... Or should we try an unknown? Because the unknown has... A, you know what? We'll do unknown. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. So we'll see if the unknown has a special time room. That I think only starts coming up in the... Actually, I think it can start coming up in this level. Okay, no, it's not, though. Okay, oh. Yeah, unfortunately, these guys... If you do have a healing effect, like read kills or deal crit damage to get healing, you can actually farm those guys from what they keep summoning. Ooh, actually we'll take that. Because the crit damage modifiers are pretty good. I mean, uh oh. Okay, one of these rooms. So we'll use that to get into this little area. Smack, smack it down. There we go. I generally would avoid trying to get anything that... Ah, no, we'll leave that. Again, pistols aren't very good. Even with their combo move, it's still not exactly great. I try to avoid having no stamina at all just because of... Oh, shoot. I don't even know how we got hit by... Ooh. There we go. A little bit of button mashing for there once we have this. There. Uh, I guess we'll replace that. I mean, I really do want to find us something that doesn't either does weaken the enemies or gives us better. Where do we want to go from here? Uh, I may actually try going for a relic instead of stats, just because I do want to see if we can get some kind of healing effect. I should be able to clear this. Oh, new crit or new corruption modifier. Fool's Bounty. This is, yeah, opening chest will inflict corruption, so you generally don't want to go for gold rooms if you do have this as a debuff, just because that 10 corruption on you does add up pretty quick. Oh, shoot. That's... I was saying that the two-handed weapon should not be used for... Clearing out small guys, and yet there I was. Um, yeah, we'll probably replace the weakened enemies, just because I won't really get a way to weaken anyone until the next boss, really. I do have to practice my parrying, but I still feel like I prefer to just use the dodges more. It almost feels more reliable, because it's easier to time things out. Sometimes the visual cue for when they're going to do something... That's a little odd. I thought it would have given me that modifier for... This is if it's from behind it gains extra damage, right? Yeah, attacks from behind should deal 30% more. So I don't know why that one... Oh, I guess it's not... doesn't say it's crit. Oh, and our first elite enemy. 
Actually, our first couple, I think. There we go. Once you get the first boss down, you'll start getting elite enemies, which are basically just bigger health tanks compared to the previous ones, and their attacks will inflict corruption if they do hit you. So, what relics do we got this time? No, no, no. Nothing good. I don't want to use any more favor just because I want to keep it more in line with how much favor you generally have, so I guess we're just going for another relic try. But really hope we can find something with healing. Anything that heals you does become a run changer for the better. But I can't really say I have a strategy for what paths to try picking in the game. Stats are a nice overall base to go along. But you generally find... Oh, we got a dagger. It does give a little damage up, so we'll probably use the dagger and the claw. The dagger's not a bad offhand, it's... Kind of hard to say. I think if you don't have a relic that lets you heal from killing an enemy with the environment, then the dagger is probably better than the shield. But the shield is very good for sending enemies into something like, say, spike pit or... Well, not a spike pit, but the spike traps. Gotta watch, because that is an elite one of the sacrificed virgins. And smack down. And we're gonna interrupt again. There we go. Okay, nothing else really over here. Oh, and then this should be... Yeah, if you play long enough and you do get stuck on certain levels, you're definitely going to find that the layouts repeat pretty often, so... They'll come across the same things over and over to let you practice with. Well, speaking of environmental kills, we could, I suppose, try getting that. It does give us some dexterity, so you know what? We will take that relic. And let's see what's next. Gold and gold. Uh, you know what? We'll probably go for gold unknown, and then maybe the left path that has the stats. See if we can buy something that'll increase those a bit more. Oops, speaking of the environment, killing them. Yeah, even that is a very good way to help keep yourself alive, is the environmental healing. The only problem is that it's so unreliable on if you'll actually see one of the relics that gives healing or not. That's the only problem with them. Oh, man, this is going to be a little bit of a run room. And we'll just go right through. Okay, we got another elite. So, always try to go for... Actually, I'm not even sure what they are. I think they're... A witch doctor. Oh, shoot. Yeah, you can see, even if it wasn't... There we go. Okay, what's this one give? Uh, you... Actually, you know what? I think we'll keep the one we got, just because I'd rather take the max health over the gold find. And here's a little corruption hit. Ooh, 15. That's actually more than I thought it was. I wonder if maybe the types of chests will give different levels of corruption, because the ones with the little gold skull on them, I think, are a little bit more of a heftier reward you get from them. Again, I don't know for sure. And what's the modifier? Mortal Harvest. Well, speaking of healing... Earns around... Don't... Con gold anymore, but they are filled with blood which will heal you. It's just that they also give you I think one corruption per little tick. Oh, looks like a weapon room for the unknown, but that actually can work in our favor. Because that will let us... Okay, and we do have another thing over here. There we go. A little bit extra healing for us. Oh, 
Oh, again, as soon as anything comes from a different angle and you're swinging, you feel it. There we go. Now, the floating eye guys like that don't trigger the spike traps, but if you do get them on one, you can just step on them and that will set them off too. So that's a good reminder to have. And just see if we can. There we go, finish that up. Okay, let's see what weapon choices we have. I don't think we'll really get anything. Yeah, the charge attacks. Ooh, actually, that one's pretty good because that will be, you know what, I think we will go for it. The Sacrificial Makata is very good against certain bosses because when it's only one enemy you're near, that'll do crit damage guaranteed on them. So that's a nice boon to get against some of the bosses. Like the first one, as long as you take out the Jaguars as they spawn, you can make use of it there, and all the other bosses so far haven't really had ads that'll spawn. So that's a good modifier to find. I just gotta figure out what the best way to go here is. I think it... Yeah, I just wanted to break that, just because I could. Yeah, I think we'll... We want the side route first, because... Oh, another chest, so a bit of corruption. Yeah, I guess depending on the chest type... Ah, see, I don't like using charge attacks with the two-handed because it's so slow to use. We'll go along here now. And we'll probably start with a charge attack. There we go. Ah, oh, shit. Yeah, just use that because of the... Oh, and we got one of the elite, I guess, solar engines. Actually, I shouldn't call it that, but... I wonder what the names of them actually are. It'd be kind of cool if they added a little compendium that kind of tells you a bit about all the enemies that you can encounter in the game. Uh, you know what? We'll buy the damage percent... damage in the gold find up. Because that's a nice stat to grab. Okay, and we'll just smack these three a bit. Oh, look at that. That's where I like the crit damage for. And one more area to go through, then we're up to the boss. Now, the Cursed Twins, which is the next boss, is a lot like the Panther one. Only a couple of mechanics, and you once you get them a couple of times, they're pretty easy to learn. Ooh, look at that. That was pretty good. Uh, no, we don't want that. We'll stick to the Titan Slayer. Okay, oh. We will hit that for the bit of healing. Yeah, 19 health for one thing of corruption. So that's actually not a bad trade-off to have. Now we want to run over here quick to let him proc that. We get corruption anyway because of the next room we're going into, so we're... Ah, see, that's just bad. So we're going to leave that alone. And just make our way over this way. Do a few little rolls to go faster. And what do we got here? Okay, just a couple of regular lurkers, and then a solar thing. There we go. Like I say, once you get something with critical damage, and the Sacrificial Makana is one of my favorite weapons because of how easily you can... Re well, actually, how reliably you can get crit damage off. It's pretty good for that. Ooh, speaking of crit damage, I think we will use our blood offering here to get that. It is a lot of corruption against us, but I think it's going to be worth it because of the just boost to the crit damage that we're going to get constantly from the next boss. And we are probably going to head... Yeah, oh, no, just one corruption shy of a new modifier, so... Oh, no, never mind. Shadow word. Okay, regular enemies concealed in shadows, and they're revealed by light when they're attacking. That can be a very dangerous one to get, but thankfully the boss will always be revealed. So the twins are basically a two-phase fight that go back and forth. The first one is the solar twin, or the twin the sun, and what they'll do is drop little sun drops, 
and when they whip them, they'll actually explode and have a chain reaction effect that goes... This is basically, if you dodge and can read the attacks pretty well, you'll... Uh-oh. And that's the switch over. And dodge this one. Oh shoot, I was going to say we'll parry the... There's the parry, and a weaken, and lets you really wail into him. Oh, and get out of that. And it's basically just that back and forth. The Moon Twin, which you saw briefly there... Oh, crap. Wow, actually, we... Yeah, the Moon Twin basically has the two attacks. The Spear Run, or the Spear Rush that'll charge you, and you have to dodge. And then the sort of flurry, and then little second lead off against you. So, we'll collect that, and that was the Eclipse of the Cursed Twins run, all done. It's just reading their patterns and getting to know them pretty well. So, the Sacrifice Virgins were our nemesis that did the most damage to us. But not too bad, only 25 minutes to complete that expedition. I did have a lot more trouble with the next level than I did have on Eclipse of the Cursed Twins. Because, unfortunately, each expedition will basically add the last, the previous boss you fought in with it. Like you saw after we did the Bloodhunter hunts, he became part of the Eclipse of the Cursed Twins. Now the Bloodhunter and the Twins are both a part of Tamok's Awakening, and then all three are also part of the Path of Cruelty, which is the last one. But we'll end things off here, so hopefully that little trick helps you guys a bit. You can see the patterning and suggestions about how to try going for things. Until I see you all in the next episode of Those Survivors, please remember as always to take care, and stay alive.